Hey, hello, everyone. Welcome to today's Inspire Me Wednesday. Wednesdays. We have a very, very special guest that I am so excited for you all to hear from. And I feel one of the main things that makes her so special for all of us is that she has been here from way back when. Okay, I want you to think pre-launch, before Mane officially launched, she was one of the market partners. I think she was, she says she was um, amongst the first 130, okay? This is someone who has made over $13 million with this company. And I feel like we have something to learn from her if she's still here today, almost 10 years later, running a super successful business. If you guys don't follow her on Instagram, you need to follow her because it's crazy how inspiring and how consistent someone can still be after have been doing this business for so long she's a wife she's a mom she's busy she does all the things all the things that we use as excuse she does and she's still here leading from the front so without taking any more of your time and i am so grateful to have you here today the girls are very excited to you know learn from you um and if you can just start off so we do these every wednesday and we start off with hearing a little bit about your story kind of you know take us back to why and how you started. Um, and then we have some questions for you. Okay. Well, thank you so much for inviting me. I'm honored to be here amongst one of the crazy successful teams in this whole company. Um, so I'm Anne and I'm wearing my apron because I'm literally in the middle of filming content <laughs> right now. So um, apron it is. This is how you'll find me most of the time during the day. Um, so I'm in my journey. I'm, I always jokingly say I'm one of the money dinosaurs because I've been here forever. <laughs> um, but I did sign up pre-launch. So my life, I want to take you back there briefly because this is such a powerful thing. And this is truly, truly uh, how transformative this company can be to somebody's life. So my husband and I were just coming out of a five-year bankruptcy. I have always been a home-based entrepreneur, always been a stay-at-home mama. I literally got married when I was 18 to my hunky donkey, and we're still married, which is pretty miraculous <laughs> that he's put up with me for this long. Um, but I've always done something from home. And I started a candle company. A lot of you probably have never heard this, but I started a candle company when I turned 30 because I wanted something I could do from home. And it it grew, your typical cottage industry, it grew and grew and grew to a million dollar company. And I was literally making candles at home. And I it just got so big and I had kids that were in sports and it was just too much. So I, I opted to sell the company after you know several years of building this awesome little cottage industry company. And the people that we sold it to, just to keep it short and sweet and to the point, um, ripped us off, <laughs> took off with a lot of uh, customer formulas, and it just ended really badly. And we were left holding a $600,000 tab that we no longer had a business to fulfill those obligations. So devastating, like totally devastating to see a dream you had and built and worked your blood, sweat and tears come to that was awful, very humbling in my life. And so because we felt horrible for all those creditors that were never going to get their money, we opted to do like a reorganization bankruptcy where we paid back as much as we possibly could. That was five years, five years of scraping, working nights and weekends, almost divorcing because one of the number one issues that can cause divorce is money. Um, it was a rough time, super rough, super high stress. My husband was working out of town nights, weekends, we're trying to balance kids and school and basketball and graduation and all these things. And then halfway through all of that, I found out I was expecting again, surprise um, and super high stress pregnancy naturally. And because of that, my daughter was born three months early. Um, I had toxemia, which turned to eclampsia, home seizures, 911, the whole kit and caboodle resulted in a three month early preemie. And we were in the NICU queue for seven weeks. So trying, like life stopped, <laughs> the frantic freak out of life stopped, but my life just talk about chaos. It was already chaotic. It just hyped it up times a hundred. So there we were middle of this bankruptcy, struggling financially. Now I have to be home with this very, very necessary needing little baby. So 
I dabbled in network marketing, tried to find something that worked and just got to a place where we were so desperate. I had, I don't know if you guys can relate, but I lost myself. I just lost myself trying to be everything, trying to figure out our finances. You know, I felt horrible that it was my business that, that erupted. And even though like I, I, I didn't make the people do what they did. I still felt responsible. And as a mom, you just try to fix everything. Right. So I'm trying to do all these things. And I just crumbled into nothing. And I can remember rock bottom. I was in Jackson Hole, Wyoming on the side of a mountain praying for God to just do something. I was, I was done with it all. I didn't know what I was going to do. My marriage was on the rocks. I didn't know if we'd have a marriage in six months. My little girl was super, super special needs, needed me all the time. So many things. And I can remember standing on the side of this mountain, looking out at just incredible mountains, just praying, God, I just need you to do something for me. I need something. And I was very specific in my prayers, y'all. I need something I can do from home. I have friends that work in network marketing, so maybe that's it. And maybe I could find a company that I could finally partner with and believe in the products and really go somewhere. I had never succeeded at network marketing, by the way. And like, just that I could pay back what I cost my family and be able to help the people that I feel like I need to help in my life. And all I can say is I felt God hear me that day. I felt, I mean, we may as well have felt an earthquake. I felt God hear me and I didn't know what was coming, but I knew something had shifted. And it was literally a couple of weeks later. And I was up late one night and somebody on my computer was talking about this company called Monate. And I remember thinking, I haven't heard of that one. And I just had this tingling feeling in my gut that that was it. And so I didn't know anybody in the company. I reached out to Tony. I didn't know Tony Van Schoik at the time. Reached out and just said, hey, it's 2.30 in the morning. I need to know about this. Call me. Here's my phone number. She called me at 8.30 by 8.35. Like I, I didn't know anything. I hadn't tried the product. I didn't know. I didn't know the comp plan. I just knew this is what I'd prayed for. God was telling me, go, go, go. And so I signed up in five minutes. Tony even like paused and said, are you sure? <laughs> like, don't you want to know a little more about the comp plan? I said, all I know is God's telling me this is it. And so here we go. I'm ready. So I signed up, immediately hung up from signing up and called my little sister, called my sister, Bessie Susie. And then I called Julie Stevens. Well, I text Julie Stevens and I'm like, word vomit. I'm so excited about this. I, the hair care. I didn't know their network marketing could even do hair care. Apparently it's anti-aging. I didn't even know that was a thing for hair care. I knew it was, I mean, just blah, 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 blah. But I managed to get through to them that this is exciting and we need to look at this. And they're like, okay. And Julie's like, I'll pray about it. I'll, I'll think about it. <laughs> she told me pretty much no for like a week trying to come up with the money. So long story short, that was almost 10 years ago. We jumped in. We didn't look back. There's been a lot of ups. There's been a lot of downs. There's been days I'm like, what the heck were we thinking when we said yes to this company? But through it all, God prevailed. He blessed it. And that's why this company is where it's at today. I have no doubt because God has always blessed this company. And because we have such incredible people in the field with hearts to serve and to grow and to do better, right? And that's what we're all here for at the end of the day. For whatever reason, whatever your why is, like I told Joe, she was asking me, you know, hey, what's a few things about you? And, and I said, you know, my biggest why is my family. Like everything I do is for my family. And most people can relate to that, right? And so my why has changed a little bit. We're no longer living in a 1,260 square foot double wide trailer with a family of five. <laughs> That's where we were at thinking, I'm never going to move from this place and it's falling apart around me. And this is never going to look different. And what am I going to do for retirement? Like those were all the things rolling through my head. You know, we were able to build our dream home on 80 acres out in the country. It's perfectly accessible for our daughter. She will always live with us. We were able to hire a private teacher. That's why you see, if you ever watch me on social media, you'll see Susie here all the time. People are like, does she live with you? No, she's Gracie's. She's got a master's in special education. And so we actually moved her from Colorado to come teach our daughter. These are things that would have never happened had it not been for a yes, a scared crapless, we got to do something. Yes, almost 10 years ago. So my story is different than, than everybody else's. But at the core, my story's the same, right? We all said yes, because we needed something to, to be different. 
we wanted something better. Maybe we wanted to stay home with our kids. Whatever it was, I'm so thankful because this company literally changed my life. And you hear people say that, and sometimes it feels a little disingenuous, but the truth is it really, truly changed my life. I'm a completely different person now than I was back then. So I'm thankful, and I love sharing my story and the power of what this company can do, the power of belief, the power of hope, the power of surging forward, even when you're scared crapless and you don't know what else you're going to do. But you got to do something because that's what we do as mamas, as wives, as fighters. That's what we do. So that's my story. I love that. Oh, my God. Everyone's like in tears. That was so powerful. And and we have a variety of people here. Some have been here for a while. Some are brand new. You know, Mane better than everyone, anyone on this call. If someone asked you, like, why Mane? Why this company? You're still here 10 years later. What would you say is the main different difference from us and any other company or any other job? Or like, why are you still here? What made Monate so special? What makes Monate so special? Well, uh, God told me to do it, so I did it. I'll say that. But I will say this: I, I, I successfully failed with six other network marketing companies. You name it, I did it. Um, and I think the difference was Eric Worre told me one time. He's a good friend of mine, and he said, "You had the gift of desperation." And I never looked at what I went through as a gift. It was always just this biggest trial of my life, but it really was because I knew I had no choice but to make this work and come heck or high water, no matter how hard it got, because guys, entrepreneurship is hard, right? It's hard. The ups, the downs, the no's, the disappointments, people leave for this, people go for that. But deciding on your success is the first thing you have to do. And partnering with this company, what made it different, number one was God. But number two, um, our compensation plan, man, I, it it's better than anything I had ever seen. When we sat down and figured out how we could make money, I can remember my first paycheck. And I know this isn't televised, so, you know, all the things that we're supposed to say that say, I'm not guaranteed you'll make in this money, the whatever. Um, my first check in, in 10 days was $3,850. That was more than we made together in a full month of working. That was different right away. And I'm like, okay, this is real. I can remember calling Tony saying, how can they pay me this much money? Like I didn't, I don't feel like I hardly did anything. And she said, it's because of their comp plan. So number one, the comp plan sets them apart from anybody out there. Number two, the family, the Erdanettas, their trust in us, but my belief in them and how I've seen them show up for 10 years through the ups and the downs and the struggles and the ins and the outs. They have always remained dedicated to the field. And those two things, when you've got a field that's ready to work and an incredible comp plan and an incredible product, and you've got a family that stands so strong and firm, that's why this company is where it's at. And that's why it was so different from any other company I'd ever been a part of. I will go to the mat for the Erdineta family and for this company. I mean, when I say I'm a lifer, I'm a lifer. Like there's just nothing better out there, y'all. Nothing. I love that. Amen. I feel like some people like to hear that reassurance coming from someone else because honestly it's true i have never been in another company but our comp plan is something that we all need to fully take advantage of um okay so like you said the ordinators have been around for ups downs good times bad times was there ever a time in your personal business where you went backwards lost more than half your team and how did you build up again well, I was telling Joe, right? I was telling you right before I got on here that we had the numbers, like we had $30,500 like in volume um, in 10 days. We didn't have a back office to track like who was where or how many legs I got. What's a leg? What's that mean? Like we couldn't track it. We were literally using whiteboards that first two weeks of the business. I could have hit founder in two weeks. That's a fast, fast team. Like we had the volume. I almost had the structure. Um, we were missing like one person in one spot, but I couldn't see it because we couldn't track our back office. So needless to say, I hit it the next month. That was fast. That was an overnight team, like bam. And so we were riding high, man. And then the next month it was managing market mentor. In five months, we hit director. And I think since I started in September, I think it was, I think I hit director in March, Any March, May, whatever. We had our first regional meeting like in June. And I can remember going to that regional meeting, just thinking, oh my gosh, it's only up from here. And this is so exciting. Well, then summer hit 
and people got busy and the excitement waned a little bit. And it's like, okay, yeah, we're fine. We're doing so good. By the end of the summer, most of the people that had hit founder were not being paid as a founder. I think I was, I think I was paid as an associate market mentor. And I'm like, oh no, we made a mistake. It's not going to work. Um, we had people wanting to walk away. There were all kinds of questions. That first year was so tumultuous and it would have been very easy to walk away. But at the end of the day, you got to look at yourself and where your business is at. And that's kind of what we did. It was kind of a hard look at ourselves and what we were doing. And we had stopped working. So our paychecks had stopped coming and our pay. And so <clears throat> that was hard. And I can remember that whole next year was a struggle. Like I went to executive director. I was not paid as an executive director every month at all. Excuse me. <laughs> Let me take a drink. And I think my rank went up and down. Julie Stevens' rank went up and down. <laughs> Y'all, I'm so sorry. It was so hard that first full year. A lot of us were just figuring out what to do. A lot of us had never had this kind of success in network marketing. But good grief, just a second. You're going to take your time. That always happens to me. I hate it. It's so dry here. I keep doing this all day long. Um, the first year was probably the most tumultuous year. And then um, that second year, we started gaining some momentum. And then we were doing really good. And then the founder's opportunity went away. And all of us were like, that was our sales pitch. Like, what are we going to do? And I can remember everybody like, what are we going to do? People are like not wanting to stick around now because they can't be a founder anymore. And that was our big pitch. And so we struggled, we struggled for about six months. And I remember writing an email to Ray and saying, we need another carrot, man. Like we need something. If you've ever thought about doing a car program, we need a car program and we need it now. And that was in July and September was our very first leadership summit. And they introduced, actually it was the second, and they introduced the car program and Ray messaged me. This is the kind of CEO we have. He emailed me and he said, I listened to you. I listened to you and we're launching the car program because of what you said. And so we went like a rocket ship. So we went from boom to, oh my gosh, sputtering and then boom again. And we kept growing and growing. And then 2017 hit and all the hater stuff, like here's the life cycle of Monet, but the hater stuff hit. We had hairstylists get a hold of the product and they were trying to launch their own brand. And so they launched this huge campaign against Monet. And let me tell you what, people lost half their team. We were losing people left and right because all this junk was surfacing and we were like, can we trust them? They're saying we can't trust them. It was tumultuous, but that's the life cycle of an entrepreneur, y'all. It's never just always going to be up. There's always going to be a down. And if you listen to Eric Worre talk about it, he's like, this is your life as an entrepreneur. This is going to always be your life. Most important advice I have for that is enjoy the highs. You earned them. Man, celebrate and enjoy them. Be smart with your money. Don't eat it like candy. Be smart with your money. But prepare, right, for those ups and downs because they're going to come. That's the one constant you can guarantee is they're always going to be there. People are always going to come and go. And that's another thing Eric told me. One of the first times I did a mentoring session with him, he said, your job in network marketing as a leader is going to be build and rebuild and build and rebuild and build and get the idea. Like you're always going to build and rebuild because people are always going to walk away. Not everyone is going to be committed to this business like we are. Not everyone is going to stick to it because they've seen the ups and downs and they know this is still on the hardest day, way better than working in retail. Man, I worked retail. That's some hard freaking work, man. <laughs> that is hard. This can be really hard. Pick your hard. One of them's going to pay a heck of a lot more no matter how hard it gets. And one of them's worth it to really stick it out. And a lot of people don't. They give up before they see, man, this is really worth it, right? Or they get their shiny penny. There's a new company and they're going to offer founder shares and you can be one of the first ones. And I, I've lost count of how many companies have come along and swiped our people away with a big shiny penny. And here's a really funny fact. We have a massive percentage of people that always try to come back after a year. We don't always talk about that. You don't always hear that part, but we have a massive, massive percentage of people that come back because they realize the grass isn't greener on the other side. The grass is green where you water it. So water your grass, be ready for the ups and downs. It's a part of what we do. 
But still, at the end of the day, after 10 years of doing this, I would take it every day of the week and twice on Sunday over anything else out there. Amen. And if you're new, be grateful that you're hearing this because I wish when I started, someone told us, you know, the high doesn't last forever because I got to the high and I was like, this is never going down. And did I have a rude awakening? <laughs> um, so I love that. And thank you so much. Um, Raquel has the next question for you. I love everything you are saying. You are preaching. I love it. Um, but just like you said, your business went through the ups and downs. I also feel the way that you did business, because even I haven't been around as long as you have. And the way that I've done business has had to change and I've had to adapt because things change. Social media changes. And I feel like you have done such a great job of adapting and even now I heard on one of your recent calls, you were saying how, how you have grown so much on your Instagram and now how you are tapping into other things. So how have you adapted to new things, pivoted? How have you learned like what to incorporate? And then also how have you grown your social media so big in the last year, I guess? Super good question, because I'll tell you back when we started, y'all, we didn't have Zoom. Zoom wasn't even like, Nobody knew what Zoom was. We didn't have FaceTime on our phone. We Instagram was strictly a photo sharing app. Facebook was where it was at. Instagram came along and people were like, I don't know about that. We weren't using it for a business. I was using Instagram. I, I had a couple hundred followers um, when I started Money. I had a couple hundred followers over on Facebook and it was all about being able to share with my family back in California. That's what those apps were for. And we spammed the heck out of it, like advertisement and, oh, don't miss out on this. And it was horrible. The marketing was horrible. What we did in the beginning was we utilized face-to-face. -face. We utilized wine and washes. We utilized three-way calls. They had something called com freeconferencecalling.com. So we would get on these conference calls where we would have 30 people and it was just voice. It was like a phone call, but it was a conference it was a conference call on the phone. And so that's how we built in the beginning without social media. So then social media came and really changed and people started using it and people were blowing up. And the oldies were like, I am not a 20 year old bikini model. I am not doing social media. You can't make me. And that's dumb. Like that was everybody's mindset when social media really started blowing up. And then came TikTok. I can remember one day on a training with Eric Worre, him saying, there's this thing coming called TikTok. And I'm telling y'all, it's going to be huge. Get in now. And I remember thinking videos, all videos, that's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. I'm trying to conquer the stupid picture app one. I'm not doing that one. And now look at where we're at. We, we had a pandemic and it told us that you better evolve or you're going to get passed up. And so me, midlife, a mom, I kept thinking, what am I going to do on social media? I'm a stay at home mom. I'm boring. I am not like, I, I don't travel the world. I don't, you know, all these things. And so I made a lot of excuses for a long time and I missed out on so much business. So what, what I really want to tell everyone is embrace all the ways to find the people for your business. Don't just focus on social media, utilize utilize those, those events and those three, that's such a critical part of what we do, but figuring out how to do social media, you are missing out on so much business. I missed out on so many years. So it's funny how I tried to find my niche. People said, you got to find a niche. And I'm like, I don't have a niche. I I'm not a hairstylist. I'm not a makeup artist. I'm a stay at home mom y'all. Um, so I tried all these things. I tried different, I hired a person to help me with my social media, nothing, nothing, nothing. And last year we were kind of experiencing a little downhill slide in the business again. And I'm like, I've got to figure something out because I have a daughter that I have to be home with. I can't get out and network like I used to. Like that's not an option for me. So it's figure it out or just suck it up, buttercup. Things are going to go down from here. So social media, I was trying to figure out what my niche was going to be. And, um, it was not being a network marketing guru. I can tell you that because there's plenty of people doing it and I don't plan to travel the world training people about network marketing. So don't do that if that's not what you want to do. One day in February, they, this little weird trend came along and it was, I don't, maybe you guys have seen this one and you put ice cream and a fruit roll up and it makes it crunchy. Raise your hand if you heard of that like a year ago. Okay, so I'm like, that is so weird. Gracie, my little girl, let's try that. 
So we did that randomly one night and I'm like, this is so stupid that I'm posting. It has nothing to do with what I normally post on here, but we did it. It went viral. And I'm like, what the heck, man? I know nothing. This tells me that I know nothing. So I started playing with it. And I started out, my goal last year was to build my social media to 50,000 followers. And I didn't know how I was going to do it. I, I screenshot my three platforms. Like in Facebook, I had 9,000 followers. TikTok, I had like 3,000 followers. Um, Instagram, 26,000 followers, which was falling every day. And I just started pushing and doing the recipes, scared to death. The one thing I told myself is I was going to commit a year to it and I was going to show up every day in my stories. And I was going to show up every day. I was going to put the content out there even when I didn't want to. And it started blowing up. I had a couple of videos go viral. My, my goal for the end of the year was Instagram to be at 50,000 followers. We closed out at 211,000 followers on Instagram. Facebook, we're almost at 100,000. TikTok, we're at almost 60,000. And it's growing all the time. And <laughs> fun, fun thing, fun fact, um, it's cooking. It has nothing to do with money. Eight. And my personal business has never been better in my entire career with Monate than it is right now. And if you go to my social media right now, you're not going to see me blasting Monate, Monate, Monate on my timeline. In fact, you're really not going to see a whole lot about it. The sales, the transactions, they happen in the stories. And that's where I focused. Um, I think we're halfway through the month. I've already got 27, 26 VIPs. Um, we we'll, should close out a couple more neighborhoods this month. Never, ever did a Mo neighborhood in the first nine years of my business. The sales happen in the stories. So even if you feel like you don't know what you're doing with social media, even if it feels like a mountain, dig in, figure it out, find something you love, be consistent, show up every single day because there, your viral video could be right around the corner and it can turn the tides for your business, but show up in the stories and let them see that you're a real person. Talk to them every day. Use the products every day most important advice I could give anyone. And my business is blowing up like it never has before. My personal volume is, is almost at 10,000. I've never hit the 10,000 mark for everybody that does that every month. I mean, props to you, but that was not me. Almost 10,000, gonna be a super seller, but it's never too late. I don't care your age. I don't care your weight. I don't care. I don't care if I can do it. Anybody can do it. I will not hear any excuses from anyone. If I can do it, you can do it. You just have to figure it out and commit and show up every day. Okay. Stepping off the soapbox. Thank Sorry. I love it. Thank you so much for that response. I want people to know that they can do it even if they don't have a niche. Cause that was like I hear that so much and I feel like it's just finding your way and now you're attracting people that you have something in common with. So someone in the comments asked the question, they said, are most of your VIPs or market partners from your town or city or are most of them just from online? No, it's everywhere. I have a few around here, Susie, my sister Bestie's here, but most of my people, I have market partners and customers in every state and other countries. Absolutely not a lot of it. And that's, that's the power of social media. You get the world at your fingertips. Okay. I have one last question for you. So, um, sorry, I was like reading that. So with your, um, now that you do everything online, I guess mainly because of your daughter and it's just blowing up. So why not? You have access to all those people. What's your system for making sure that you do content every single day? You said you were just recording some, do you batch cook like every day or like how is it that you kind of structure yourself well right now I've tapped out of all of my pre-done content and so I'm trying to get caught up we had director circle last week and you know I'm not cooking in Miami um so yeah I do try to batch I try to get a week's worth of content ahead so that if something comes up and you got a sick kid that day and you can't do anything you can still show up and then some, there's times i'm going to be honest i've gone back to stuff i posted nine months ago that my new followers have never seen and i'll rebrand it a little bit and repost it it doesn't do as good as the newer stuff but yes absolutely having a game plan is critical for being consistent show up every single day and if you don't have a post it's not the end of the world let yourself breathe if you don't have it don't panic but make sure you're in your stories and the biggest the biggest advice I can give is I started, you know, my thing is energy. I love the energy. Every single morning, if you go watch my stories, I am standing there talking to my audience and making an energy shot. 
which is a, a, an energy stick, a half a cup of water and a half of a lemon juice. I rarely talk about, hey, I'm making an energy shot. Check it out. I'm just talking to them. I didn't sleep last night. My kid's crazy. Oh my gosh, it's five degrees outside. Oh my gosh, I got so much to do today. I've got this business meeting I've got to do, but I'm making it. I'm making it. And every day I've done that faithfully for three years. And now every day without fail, I will have at least five to 10 people saying, what is that energy thing you're putting in your, what, what are you putting in your, your drink? And so on Instagram and on Facebook, you can do a saved reply. I have saved replies that immediately I type in energy, it populates it. So it takes me two seconds. And then it ends with, I'm an affiliate for that company. If you would like pricing information. Yes, yes. So the next thing is I have pricing in there. And then I have a cart saved because you can save those VIP carts. And I send out those, I send out five to 10 to 20 VIP carts a day for energy. And I have, I don't even know how many energy customers that just buy the energy from me. And it, I, I rarely go in there and say, hey, this is my energy and it's 30 sticks a box and it's blah, 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 blah. Very rarely will I do that. It's because I'm using it and people see me using it. Same thing for putting my makeup on or taking my makeup off or curling my hair. And for a long time, I would not mention it. My husband was panicking saying, you got to start talking about this at some point. I said, I'm taking a year and I'm bu building value. The one piece of advice I have for social media is figure out something you love to do, something that you're good at and provide value, value without expectation. You provide value that builds so much trust with your audience. And when your audience trusts you, they will buy anything you recommend. For the love, I put a little bow on my hair the other night to do my makeup. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I need that bow. What is that on your head? And it's like, it's a $2 headband from Amazon, but here you go. Like, it doesn't matter. When they trust you and they feel like they're a part of your life and they watch you every day, they trust you to buy. So when the time comes to recommend your favorite products, they're ready to buy. I tried to sell, sell, sell for the first eight years of my business and it just went but the minute I stopped trying to sell and just provided value, that's when they came in a flood. So best advice, best advice, provide value. Find a way to provide value. Do you like to crochet? Are you a homesteader? Do you like to do nails? Are you a nail tech? Um, do you, uh, like whatever it is you do, like just figure out something you really enjoy doing and something you can see yourself committing to doing every day and figure out a way to provide value. Because guess what? If you like it, there's people out there that like it too. And there's people that want to know more from you. So talk to them like your friends and show up every single day. People are not going to stay committed to you if you're only showing up every now and again. Can you imagine, you know, your favorite little boutique that you love to go buy gifts from is only, a, well, we don't know when they're going to be open. Maybe they're open on Friday. Maybe they're open on Monday. It's a crapshoot. We don't know. They're going to find another salon. They're going to find another place. Same thing for your content. If you're not showing up every day and they don't know if they're ever going to see you again, they're going to go find somebody else that is showing up because people just want to be a part of your world. So that's my biggest advice. And it's it's leading to very successful recruiting without really recruiting. Boom, you nailed it. Honestly, thank you. Guys, if this is not inspiring for all of us that don't have the crazy social media following and we always think, I mean, my following drops every day too. And for people that think I'm not an influencer, I don't like have the perfect content. Look at this example right here. And thank you so, so, so much. It is so inspiring and refreshing to see someone that started from day one, still here, doing the do, providing value. Congrats on all your new enrollments. That is amazing. Um, and I'm sure, you know, everyone learned something new from this call. So thank you so much. We love you. Guys, I'll send you the recording. And I mean, let's go after Anne. Let's let's give her a run for her money with her social media. Everyone go find your niche. Let's compete with her following because on dude, it took her a year and look at everything you did. So that's amazing. Thank you so much for real. My honor. You guys can do this. I just, you know, I'm Mama Anne. So I hope that every one of out one of you can go out there. Your success is our success, right? A rising tide floats all boats. So let's cheer each other on, be supportive and don't be afraid to do it. Try new things and don't be scared. And you know what? If it doesn't work, then try something else. It's okay. It's okay if you do that. You don't have to be a perfect influencer to find success and to find your following. Your following is out there. And there are people that need what you have to offer. Just find something you love, 
figure out a way to provide value and the followers will come. Absolutely. Thank Love you. your faces, Joe. Take care. Smooch Thank that you. sweet baby for me. Thank you. Have a great night. Bye. Bye.